right, I better we're back. My next guest plays the mom on the popular Fox sitcom Malcolm in the Middle. Please welcome Jane Kesmarek. It is so good to be back in New York. Oh, you like it here? Oh, you people are the luckiest people in the world if you live here, and I know you live here, so. Yes, yes. It's the greatest city in the world, and it's very nice to be yeah, back. So, so uh, I mean, what do you love so much about New York City? I love, I love the energy of this place. We've been living in Los Angeles lately. Um, my husband's on the West Wing, and I right. do Malcolm in the Middle, so we're very, very lucky people, but uh, it's, it's the energy and the bars and the availability <laughs> of liquor. Yeah. I have There's just no liquor in other major cities. <laughs> What are you talking about? I have tiny children, so I enjoy oh. having a cocktail and taking a cab home. Oh. And that has to, I'm, I'm kidding you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the little Timmy joke, I think we're fine. I set but the bar just... so low that you're all safe. <laughs> I no, died in this great. pool. Uh, anyway, um, I don't care. I've lost the will to live. You know, it's funny, speaking of kids, you did, you were shooting episodes of your show while you were pregnant. I was pregnant for the entire first season of Malcolm. Um, um, I went out to eight months pregnant, 175 pounds, and varicose veins were popping. It was, uh, it was not a pretty time, but they disguised me very well. I carried, um, uh, Cause your character wasn't pregnant, so you, no. you have to do, what do you do in that situation? They were very clever. I carried uh, laundry baskets, I carried, um, uh, a cooler, mm -hmm. I carried frying pans that got bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. They put me in a bubble bath. Uh, right. once I yelled at the boys so fervently, uh, that I threw my back out and they put me in bed. Right. And we had a very smart DP named Levy Isaacs who illuminated my face and cast shadows below. So you tended not to look at this dark monolith below. Right. And uh, uh, we finished the first season in November and I gave birth a month later. So. I'm always curious why, because this has happened to, you know, Lisa Kudrow on Friends. She was pregnant and mm -hmm. she was always, car you know, and, and different characters are always pregnant and they're always trying to figure out a way to deal with it. Why do they never have the character just say, I won a burrito eating contest? Or send, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, you know, and just, or act like they just pigged out on donuts or something, like go that route instead of the frying pans, things well, like that. Well, this was our first season at Malcolm. We were, we were filming these episodes and none of them had even been on the air yet. And I know right. that they didn't want to, they didn't know how the show was going to go in the first place. And they thought it was going to be a lot of new information, just getting to know these characters. Right. And they didn't want that one to be a, you know, a Bulgarian or a right. someone who ate too much or was pregnant. It was right, right. They, they wanted had to, to hide stick. It. They had to hide it. Now, your everyone loves this show. Your parents, though, are not fans. Is that true? I love my mother and father dearly, but they were a bit shocked when I took the pilot episode home for them. They just, you know, it just wasn't their cup of tea. They live in Milwaukee and uh, are very Catholic. Mm -hmm. And my mother belongs to a lot of bridge clubs and. Um, it just wasn't their cup of tea. My mother, was one episode where a little boy eats pizza and spits it at another boy, and my mother called very upset because she just doesn't think people should be spitting pizza on television. <laughs> and I take it she's not watching right now. No, they are, and I have to... Oh, great. I have to just tell them to skip some of that earlier part. That's hard for them to get through, so, probably. Mother, mothers are concerned about that. I, did get, I also got a letter from, my mother plays in many bridge clubs, and I did get a letter from one of the ladies in the bridge club, in the bridge club saying they were so sorry about this, you know, Malcolm in the middle debacle, and they knew a better job was around the corner, and <laughs> Janie, just hang in there, because something, you know, a little more dignified was sure to come along. You did, you did an episode of the show where it called for you to be shirtless, mm. which where you, you run to the door, mm. you're not dressed, you're completely naked, I guess, from the waist up, and you answer the door and it's a school teacher. Is yes, that right? well, it had nothing to do with sexuality. It had to do with chaos, and uh, it was a very hectic. The doorbell was ringing, the phone was ringing, the bra was wet in the dryer, and um, um, it, 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 it came out of that. Um, right. So it was. A, what did they think of that episode? I reminded my mother that. Growing up in the 60s, one of the great enjoyments around our house in Milwaukee was watching my mother put on the, her girdle. Who has mothers that they remember getting into that girdle? It was like a, it was a little rub, thank you. It was a kind of a There's always one pervert band. in the crowd. It's like a, and there were four of us, and It's a 19-year-old so kid who was not alive in the you know, 60s. He's like, I remember who I saw. But the cry would go out, you know, mom's putting on her girdle. And we would pile on the bed and watch her 
she's a very slender lady, but she would go into this girdle and those bras were pointed and someone would have a bra on her head and, <laughs> and it was Mickey Mouse time. And I right, reminded right. her that, you know, people were unclad in the household a lot of times and I, she also warned me not to tell that story. So. That's great. <laughs> Jane, we lost her a that, long time ago, don't, don't worry. Don't tell that girdle thing. What does she, uh, she do for a living, she your mom? She an, is an English teacher, retired English teacher. She also used to teach us Latin in the basement when it was hot and <laughs> we always, had no air conditioning. That's so. always fun for the kids. But she, well, oddly enough, I went to Catholic school and I loved uh, diagramming sentences, which was something my mother and I still enjoy doing when I go home. <laughs> You guys get together and it's a hot day and you well, just, you start diagramming sentences? My mother and father both are very well-spoken people and uh, it drives, it drives me crazy bad. Uh, um, when people speak grammar. bad. When people speak badly, it's an adverb of course, that goes under the predicate. When people speak badly. Yeah. And it's You fun. and the Hulk don't get along. <laughs> me mad at you, uh, Hulk crush now. Um, but I will clip things out of newspapers and send them home and ask my mother, well, now what is wrong, why is that sentence? I know that's incorrect, what is that? <laughs> and she'll say, well, the tenses don't agree. If you're gonna use the nominative pronoun in the first person, you've gotta agree. And, and you can't believe that someone still knows all this stuff. Yeah, that's great. Um, so it's I find great. that a very... It is good. It we're, is. Too, we're too cynical about boo, I... knowing things, boo. Uh, yes. You know, that's wrong with these kids today. Yeah. I don't know much, but it's still, I think it's good that but people But it's nice do. to be able to call somebody. She yes. also used to type my papers in college, which is bad, because I don't know how to type. And I try don't know how to use a computer because I don't know how to type. Try and tell kids today, I was right on that fringe between people having personal computers and uh, having typewriters. And so I, when I was in school, people, some people had personal computers, but I still had the old typewriter. Yeah. And so sometimes with the interns here, I'm like, in my day, we had to use a typewriter. Right. And then, <laughs> like, what's wrong with you, old man? In my day, I just sent the papers home to my mother and she typed them. Well, I tried that, I'm but she said, I don't you. know who you are. <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> Did, and there's no cursing in your house, I'm, I'm betting. No, I, I, you, wouldn't, you shouldn't be surprised to hear that, but it's my father, recently my brother Billy, who is uh, about 40, was home and said uh, S-H-I. Something I have never heard my parents say. You could have spelled said, like the, the, we could have gotten it on S-H-I. I could do it in sign language. That's okay, we're all right, we're fine. And, my, and I, there was silence in the house, and I thought, I, I couldn't believe this kid said, said that this. in front of your parents. And there was silence for a minute, and then my father took him into the back room and said, Bill, the English language is a beautiful language. Please find another word with which to express yourself. And right. I thought, I can't believe it. But it's their house, and they want people to... My, my, my parents, it's the same. My parents never swore. There was no swearing. And then I never heard them swear. And my room in the house the closet connected to my sister's room and she was away and they had like a bunch of iron beds just in there, you know, like for storage or something. They had stored a bunch of iron beds and one night I'm lying in there and the door to my closet's open so it connects to the other room and my father's rummaging around looking for something in the dark and he hit his shin really hard against and I heard every word there is. <laughs> like he made a point never to swear and then one night I heard them all and I was like checking them off. Them all. Incredible. My Sorry, father, Dad. When my father gets very upset. I have heard him say, I was so angry, I could have had kittens. <laughs> oh, he and must have been in the Navy. Uh, <laughs> some pretty harsh talk over there. Air Force. Yeah, Air Force, same thing. Right. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle is on Fox Sunday nights at 8.30, and it's, it's, a, it's a delightful show. It's very Thank funny you. and inventive. And in, you're in town this week to promote USA Tennis Month. Yeah. My husband and I uh, were, have been asked to talk about tennis, which we don't have much time to play these days, but it's a great, fun thing for families to do. Our kids right now are just at an age where they can just go pick up the balls when they roll away. So right. that's how the family's involved. But uh, it's Tennis Month across America, and the United States Tennis Association is offering free and low-cost tennis lessons. Just to get people doing it out Just to there. get people doing it. I learned to play tennis in an alley behind my house in Milwaukee. We used to try to hit Chico Brzezinski's cat with the ball. Uh, I don't think you're promoting the game very well with that story. <laughs> Go into an alley and fire one at a cat sometime. It feels so good yeah. to hit a ball, <laughs> like, a tennis ball. So maybe instead of going after Malcolm Lois, I'll take up tennis. Yeah, start doing that. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was great to have you here. You. Jane Kaczmarek, everyone. We'll be right back with Chase Seeger.